Physiognomy is the long-practiced art and science of assessing someone's personality from their physical appearance, specifically their face. This is an ancient practice that has support both from ancient tradition and modern science. Now, if you would like to learn more about physiognomy, you can watch my video, What is Physiognomy, right here and linked below in the description. Now, with all that being said, we are still left with a burning question. If physiognomy does indeed work and you can tell someone's personality from their physical appearance, how does it work? Does it have a more scientific foundation rooted in psychology, biology, chemistry, and genetics? Today, we will attempt to answer why physiognomy works. If physiognomy does indeed work, and you can indeed tell someone's personality from their physical appearance, why does it work? Now, I want to start off by reinforcing my position that physiognomy and face reading absolutely do work, no matter how you look at it. We all do it instinctively and intuitively, that is, judging people's character by their physical appearance. In a sense, physiognomy is obvious. I would be very hesitant to reject out of hand something that our bodies and brains seem hardwired to do. Second, cultures throughout time and across the world have recognized accuracy. From the time of the Old Testament to the Renaissance, from China to India, and from Arabia to France. Physiognomy was believed in and practiced by kings, philosophers, scientists, and doctors alike. Third, modern science has further verified the truth of physiognomy, especially since certain advancements in facial recognition, AI, and genetic science. A tidal wave of new studies have been coming out throughout the past decade going into all the little things that we can tell and a computer can tell from somebody's face alone, be it religiosity, personality traits, sexual orientation, or political identity. Fourth and finally, I have extensive personal and professional experience with face reading, and it has always been so accurate as to even surprise me. I have had hundreds of face reading clients over the years, paying me up to $50, $100 or more, and I've never had anyone request a refund or express dissatisfaction with the reading. The worst I've gotten is 95% accurate. And keep in mind, these are all complete strangers who are paying me money to do this. They have all the incentive to say it was inaccurate and ask for their money back, but they keep the reading, let me keep the money because they were satisfied. Now with all that out of the way, I want to start getting into the various theories as to why physiognomy works. Now given how ancient and widespread physiognomy is, many cultures throughout history have speculated over why it was so effective, each coming up with their own theories. Medieval Christian Europeans believed in the doctrine of signs, that is, the idea that the external appearance of things indicates their function. You may have heard variants of this theory before on Facebook or elsewhere. The idea, for example, that carrots look like eyes when sliced and are also good for your eyesight, that ginger roots look like a stomach and are good for your stomach, or that figs are good for male fertility, and so on. They then extended this idea to a general theory of interconnectedness between exterior appearance and interior function, codified by Renaissance scholars as the principle of as above, so below, or in this context, the principle of as without, so within. The same principle was used by the Greeks when they developed their theory of the four humors, the idea being that whichever humor predominated within the person would affect both their mental temperament as well as their physical appearance. Now, this theory of humors may not have been as far off as we once thought. There are indeed substances within our body that affect both our physical appearance and our personalities at the same time. They're called genes. Now, even though many of the ancients' insights regarding physiognomy still hold true today, science has advanced a great deal since then, allowing us to gain a new perspective on the inner workings of physiognomy and face reading. Now, many of us hold to a simplistic, kind of high school biology, Punnett square, level understanding of how genes work. You have one trait, let's say, for example, eye color, that has one gene for it that has a few variant alleles, brown, blue, green, etc. What if I told you that eye color alone has up to 16 different genes that affect its development and expression, and that each of these genes don't just code for eye color, but also have an influence on other systems and processes and organs throughout the body. What I'm getting at here is that the human body is a tightly interconnected holistic system, with each part affecting and being affected by many other parts of the body. As such, physiognomy and its efficacy could be explained as a function of genetics, and specifically of the potential existence of certain genes that code for both physical and mental traits at the same time. Now, this genetic theory of physiognomy is backed up by a recent study that examined doppelgangers that is, people who look very similar to each other despite not being closely related. A Quebecois photographer by the name of Francois Brunel has been uniting doppelgangers from around the world for photo shoots since 1999. And he was surprised to find that most, if not all, of them had very similar interests, likes, dislikes, and even lifestyles. This led scientists to investigate the phenomena, discovering that these people shared quite similar DNA, which affected both their appearance 
and their personalities. All of this in spite of the fact that these people were not very closely related at all. In many cases, they came from opposite ends of the world. Each person's DNA just so happened to align in just the right way that they shared both appearance and personality. This reinforces the great scientific truth that our society still refuses to accept, which is that you are your body. Your mind and personality do not exist in some vague, shadowy, immaterial state, but are rather intimately connected to the structure of your brain, which is part of your body and, like every other part of it, coded for by the DNA you inherited from your parents. In a sense, your personality, intelligence, likes, dislikes, everything that makes you, you, are as hard-coded and heritable as your height, your ability to digest dairy, or even your face. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. People's personalities change all the time in response to events in their lives. And people's faces change over time too. If my personality is shown in my face and both are determined by the genes I was born with, then my personality and face should be on a set, unchanging path. Well, a new field of scientific inquiry known as epigenetics addresses this concern. Epigenetics, the name meaning above genetics, is a relatively new field of science dealing with gene expression. You see, while our genes are inherited and remain the same throughout our lives, our bodies can sometimes use certain chemical tags to prevent these genes from expressing themselves. So while we can never change our genes, our bodies are capable of turning certain genes on or off based on stimuli. Oftentimes, these changes occur due to trauma in early childhood. For example, children conceived and born during the famine conditions of the Dutch hunger winter of 1944 remained small and trim their entire lives, as if their bodies had been ordered to stay small in order to conserve resources in response to the starvation their mothers endured. We can apply this to physiognomy by speculating that perhaps events throughout a person's life can turn certain genes on or off, resulting in them gaining new personality traits along with a new face to match. In addition to epigenetics and gene expression, there is another aspect of human biology that can affect changes in both personality and physical appearance over time. Hormones. In this case, we find one of the clearest and strongest examples of how an inborn biological factor can change both a person's physical appearance and personality, mostly based on their inherited genotype, but occasionally in response to lifestyle changes. Let's start with testosterone. Now, it is well known that high testosterone causes a person to both appear more masculine, makes your chin and jaw bigger, grows facial and body hair, enlarges your muscles, and even makes your eyes more deep set, among other things, and behave in a more masculine manner making you more aggressive and determined. On the other hand, estrogen, which is a stress hormone and not a sex hormone, as so many are led to believe even nowadays, causes an increase in feminine physical traits, weight gain, especially around the hips and breasts, loss of hair, etc., a general softening of the facial features. In addition to psychological effects, such as worry, sadness, mood swings, reactivity to criticism, and general emotional instability. Thus, we can infer that regardless of sex, someone who looks more masculine will probably have more testosterone and thus behave in a more masculine manner. Likewise, someone who looks more feminine will probably have more estrogen and will thus behave in a more stereotypically feminine manner. This is just one small case study of what I believe to be the fundamental action mechanism of physiognomy that I have sought to explain in this video. That being that certain biological factors, namely genes, epigenetic markers, and hormones, simultaneously affect both a person's appearance and our personality in a consistent and identifiable manner, allowing for an observant person to reliably determine someone's personality from his or her appearance. Now, science is a method and a process of learning, not a set of doctrines, and as such, the research on these topics is continually evolving. I hope that more research is undertaken into this area of study, especially into how it intersects with the field of genetics and endocrinology, both of which interest me greatly. Do you think I missed anything in this video? Do you disagree with my analysis of the science? Let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other physiognomy videos. And if you want to learn more about this or send me a message about any of these topics or getting a face reading analysis done or consultation session for yourself or someone you know, check out my website, prosopainsights.com. You can learn more, get in contact with me there. This has been Taylor from Prosopa Insights reminding you to always judge a book by its cover. Thank you for watching.